Today, uh, we bring you news of Tadej Pohakar's uh, Konago V4RS. This is the racing bike that the two-time Tour de France winner uh, and uh, kind of principal uh, at the UAE uh, Team Emirates and the Tour de France is uh, the, his racing bike. And his racing bike is a Konago V4RS, a uh, very storied bicycle already, and a very, very tricked out, very, very expensive bicycle. Now, what we've learned uh, by watching some videos very, very closely is something completely interesting. Now, in 3D printing bicycles, we know that, for example, Pilot has 3D printed an entire frame. Uh, BSF uh, showed us how they made uh, a mount. Um, other people have been making lugs that they then combine with tubing to get custom geometry. Uh, other people have been printing on headsets and, and handlebars and all sorts of components in metal and polymer. But this is, I think, a new thing, because we know that the, the time trial bikes have been made by Metron and stuff like that on metal for a very long time now. But this is what we're seeing on the, the Conago bike for the Tour de France is kind of improvisational 3D printing. So what we're seeing is lightweight polymer components that are put on the bike kind of at the last minute. And this is something I think is completely new. You see a picture right here of one of the things. Now, one of them is a headset cover, right? It's just a really simple polymer headset cover. The other one is a number holder. This is one of those things that, well, we know that all these bikes need a number. The number holder, they managed to make it a little bit lightweight. Why not? And they managed to add this component to the bike. And the other one is a chain ring bolt cover, which you see here, which could also be uh, more lightweight than, than the, the standard one. Now, why I think this is interesting is, well, first off, it's Colnago's V4RS bike. So Colnago at some level knows about this. They know about what this bicycle has been, what has been done to this bicycle. And this is an incredibly expensive bike, right? We know that Materialize is printing Pinarello components, right, for the seats uh, out of metal. And that's on a serious production of a really another really high-end bicycle. And we know these things are super expensive. But what people haven't been thinking about is, well, these customized, last-minute kind of improvisational components, right? That's what we know the military is interested in. We know a lot of people do this at home where you just like try to improve something in your house. It could be like a, a holder for a headphone headset uh, for your desk, right? That kind of stuff. We know that that's the value of 3D printing to a lot of people. But in bicycles, people haven't really thought about this. And what you could get is you could get uh, you know a particular rider wanting a particular mount to be a particular way or wanting a particular button to be changed in a particular way. And this kind of thing could really be very valuable to, to these teams uh, in this kind of like duct tape approach, right? So I think this is really wonderful, especially because it's this team, the UAA Team Emirates. It's this bicycle that is a, a very storied bicycle. And it's for one of the, the most uh, famous uh, riders in the, the peloton, who has a real chance of winning this race and pretty much any big race at this point. Uh, and who's only, I think he's only 24 years old, so he's going to be somebody who's going to be followed for a long time. So if... Only this Tajaj guy keeps improvising using 3D printing on his bicycle. That, are, that alone would be a, a really big thing for us. Now, the next thing is news that 3D Saran, the ceramics uh, 3D printing company, uh, the OEM, has been selected to work with Thrust Me. Now, first off, <laughs> there's a, Spanish, a, Spanish, a French company called Thrust Me. Uh, uh, which has been in uh, business to 2017, and they make in-orbit propulsion system. Now, let's take a moment right now to, to, to think about that name, Thrust Me, uh, as a space, new space startup, uh, propulsion startup, I think is a wonderful name. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if I would have chosen it, but I think it's wonderful. Now, Thrust, thrust Me, what they're doing is they're making small in-orbit propulsion systems for like satellites and things like that. They want like a compact, low-mass system, and they want to make it like in a mass-customized kind of uh, you know, highly, uh, 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 you know, highly production ready way because the satellite market is everyone's saying it's going to explode and no one can get components in time. So the quicker you get our components, the quicker you can sell and the quicker you can enable the other guy to get a satellite network or his uh, startup or whatever, or her startup in, in the sky. So, you know, serious production is a big thing. So, you know, the fact that CD Saram has been selected here for these components is, is, is big news because it could lead to a really big production. At the moment, Thrust Me wants to make like a unit a day, essentially, 365 units a year, of their iodine plasma uh, engine. So these are kind of a miniaturized uh, engine. Uh, the idea is that it's an off-the-rack component eventually, and it uses a really um, kind of uh, innovative way of, of doing propulsion. 
Now, why do they choose for ceramic 3D printing? First, this need to miniaturize this thing. They have complex shapes, like a lot of these guys in space do. They want to iterate faster and produce faster. And there's some specific stuff here that the ceramics really work for the resistance to this iodine plasma system. Uh, uh, and just generally the harsh uh, temperatures and environment uh, that this has to operate in. So I think ceramics in space is something we saw before in antenna and stuff like this. And I think that in propulsion, we're going to see a lot more development here. So this is really good news. The next bit of news is from NC State University, uh, where we're seeing a novel way to 3D print metal. Uh, it's a conductive gel. So what they do is they have a one-step room temperature 3D printing of metallic objects using a gel. So what they do is they suspend micron-sized co copper particles in water uh, of an indium-gallium alloy, uh, which is everyone's favorite low-temp uh, experimental uh, metal. They then mix it, and it forms a kind of a gel network. They then extrude this using just a conventional kind of syringe extrusion type system. Uh, then it dries and it leaves behind the part. Now, what they've also found is that if they apply heat to this while it dries, they can change the properties and the shape of this. Um, so this is essentially, if you want to do it in a most marketing ready way, you would call this like a 4D liquid metal 3D printing technology. Wonderful. Now, I think the resulting parts are 97.5% uh, metallized or metal. Uh, they're highly conductive in this case, uh, not as conductive as pure copper, obviously, but 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 getting there. And I think this is a super accessible technology. Think about this. You could literally do this like in a very, very kind of very basic setting. You don't need the high temperatures. You don't need the sintering. You don't need all this stuff. So I hope that this is really going to be taken to production. This work uh, seems like it could be a mega accessible technology. Now, for what is this going to work? You know, some circuits, some traces, or, you know, what actually would be viable? We don't know. So the paper is called Metallic Get Gels for Conductive 3D and 4D Printing. It's in the publication called Matter, and it's by Ruge Zing. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I think this could be, uh, you know, it's going to take some years, I think, but it's going to be huge, this, uh, potentially. The next bit of news is really interesting. Um, this comes to us from the CARME, uh, it's a consortium for added manufacturing research and education at the Naval Postgraduate School. And what they've done is they've done in-flight 3D printing aboard an Osprey, an MV-22 Osprey tilt rotor aircraft. And they did this, uh, um, you know, to demonstrate the 3D printing of a cast in flight. Um, so they did this at 29 Palms at the Marine Corps Air Ground Combat Center. And essentially what they've done is they've created the AMOS, which is the Advanced Manufacturing Operational System. This is made by Spencer Caroli. Uh, he's an engineer at the, the Naval uh, Information Warfare Center in IWC, uh, Pacific and San Diego. And he wants to demonstrate how you can in-flight do the pr uh, printing of medical devices and swarm robotics. What they did in this case, they scanned a Marine's arm, uh, then they uh, drew a medical cast, and then they printed it out in flight. Now, so first off, if we look at the, the printing thing here, I think what is really happening here is that this is, okay, this is basically a system that they created for in flight. They, they put it in a box so it could be relatively safe to be conducted. They also seem to have a little bit of an issue with stringing. Having said that, you know, the idea of printing about an aircraft is, is very novel. It's not novel, but it's kind of very new to try this out, and it's very, very interesting. I think about in the long run, you know, this, this could be a, a very exciting kind of capability. Now, if we're looking at this, um, you know, how long is this flight exactly? You know, uh, the combat range of the, the Osprey is like 600 miles, the Raxxon range is 2,400 miles, the top speed is 400 miles uh, an hour. So, you know, I don't think you're going to actually be able to print this cast. You know, this guy is going to be at the hospital you know, when he gets, when the cast is done, right? Uh, the flight's going to be over way before this cast is done. But having said this, I think this is, this could be a really exciting thing going forward, especially on all sorts of other craft, I think on, on, on the Navy and uh, Marine Expeditionary Force kind of craft and, and, and stuff like that. So I think this is really exciting. Anyway, this was another edition of 3D Printing News Unpeeled.